So hello everybody, how are you today? In today's video we're going to continue building our FIFA report. If this is the first video that you see, this is a series of, I think it's going to be three videos where I teach you how I build the report that I have in front of you. It is a FIFA report for following the women's or men's World Cup in football. So we're going to build, into this video, we're going to build the skeleton. We're going to build the functionality of the report without the branding, okay? So we will do this first page, which is the place where you choose the group and the teams. We will build the standings, where you will see the classification of the teams, basically. We will build the matches, the players, and the knockout phase. So the skeleton, okay? We will leave branding to the end. So, should we get started? Okay, so let's go into Power BI. And uh, as you can see here, I have already loaded all the tables. I have loaded all the data, created the DAX measures. And uh, if you want to know how I did that, I have a playlist and a link to the blog post where I explain everything step by step for the men's FIFA World Cup, which is exactly the same as the women's. Okay, And you can download this report at Curva.com membership um, downloads. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanted to do, if you remember on the part one of this series, there is an intent and the intent of this video was to be able not to do it mobile not to do a mobile version because i don't think there is such a good there are no good possibilities in power bi for that yet but i really wanted to make it as big as possible so you could still see use the report and click on a mobile so the first page i wanted just to be able to pick the country and the group very 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 quickly so what I did is you go into standings and there is here group. I put that as a slicer. I love this. You go here into the format pane general and you pick orientation uh, vertical. And here you will get the, uh, uh, the groups in like buttons, you know, which is perfect for mobile. Uh, and we do not want to have the um, header because we already know that those are the group uh, those are the group um, names so why why would you iterate that no point so as you can see now we have like a big button so we can click with a finger we wanted to make it accessible on small screens basically so we'll do it a little bit bigger until it doesn't just start doing weird things and the next thing we want to do is to be able to pick a country quickly. So to pick a country quickly, we're going to pick flag URL, do a slicer, again, general, horizontal, and then we get all the gorgeous flags. I mean, they did a fantastic job with these flags, put it somewhere in there. And then we have all the countries. We are going to also take away the slicer header. And you can see here. Now we have the uh, group names and we have the countries. And I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, we will have to put some navigation and some stuff, but this is good enough to get us started. So when the users open this report, they will say, oh, I want to see Spain. Click on Spain and they get to Spain or, oh, I want to see Group B. So they will be able to click on Group B and then they will see who is playing on Group B and we will sync the slicers everywhere. Let's do that at the end, okay? Uh, so we will fix the usability also at the end. So this is our summary tab. Now, the next thing we want to do is to build a uh, tab for the classification as they are playing. So as the matches are going on, we want to know um, how how is it going for them? Who is winning? How you know how many wins they have and all that stuff. Another thing they want them to be able to do here on the standing is to be able to change uh, the group. Here it's asking me to sync. I'm going to say sync. I want to be able to 
for the user to be able to change the group without having to go back to the first page. Because when you are on the result page, you will want to go and say, okay, I know now how my team is doing, but how is Brazil doing? Or how is France doing? Or Amsterdam? Oh, the Netherlands. Or, you know. Mm. So I want to have a key, quick button for them in here if they want to change whatever it was selected on the first page. So with that said, we do want to have a list of the uh, of the teams playing, which is we have the flags, we have the teams. I mean, you can have obviously the teams name without the flag, but I think it, the flag makes it so easy for the eye to just see the country, right? So especially the countries that you know how the flag looks like, this is a fantastic way. So we stop it there. And now we want to put the group. And now we want to, you know, get the data out. So what, get the points, how many wins, how many lose, lost matches, how many draws, how many goals, goals for, goals against, not that one. Goals against, goals diff. There we have it. And now this is a little bit too small. So we're going to go here in text and make it a little bit bigger. Okay. I actually think that because groups are a group is a team of four, or there are four teams on each group. I think it's enough if you see four countries in here. Also, we want to see the standings and the goals for the, you know, the visualization of those, of these ones. We want to see them up here, so we need the space. But I think four here is enough, because if I pick team A, I will be able to see the four teams that are playing in team A, which is useful, right? So this is the small things that make of the lighters when you are building the report. Um, okay, so now, okay, so what we want to do now is to visualize up here the lost, the draws, the wins. Okay, the wins disappear. Why is that? Oh, because I took it wrong. Just let me change that very, very quickly. Get it there. And then I put wins in here. And then I put it there. So we want to visualize win, lost, draws, goal for, goal against, blah, blah. So this is what I created. I created a um, DAX measure, you see it here, that takes the wins and then that's a backslash and then wins all. So you can see the win for whoever you've chosen against everybody else. So. If you see here, wins is sum of wins, but wins all is basically uh, calculate everything except. So, you know, it doesn't filter the group, it just gets everything. So if we put this in here as a card, you'll see it there. You will see that there, there has been seven wins. Oh my god, seven wins. Yeah, seven wins of seven matches in total. So there has been no draws yet. You can see it here, zero. This I'm going to change the text so it says wins. And then if I pick a group, the... the um, Okay, so now that we have here the uh, the flag, the teams, and the points, we really want to visualize the points. We just don't want to have them as a table only. It's good to have them as a table, but we'd like to have them also um, as a visualization. So what I did is I created a measure called wins of total, that is wins divided by wins all. Wins is just the sum of wins. 
nothing weird, wins all is the sum of wings and then is remove all the filters except if somebody clicks on a group. So if somebody clicks on a group here, filter by that. So we can see the wins by all groups or per group. Okay. So if we put these wins of total in here, put as a card, make it a little bit smaller and then change the name to wins. This is going to show us the, the wins, the number of wins by everybody you can see here. So seven wins and seven losses. There's no draws yet. This has been the women's FIFA has been going on for two days, three days, I think. So this is the standings. But if you go to group, group A, you see there's two teams they've won, which is France and Norway. Norway, right? Hey. <laughs> it is uh, for group B, it's Spain and Germany, two of two. For group C, it is Brazil and Italy. So you can see two of two. That's the beauty of these. Okay, so now that we have these, we're going to replicate that for uh, all these ones. So it's just one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's five more. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. You don't have to worry too much about where you put this because I'm going to show you a trick on how you can then put them in place. Okay, so I have the first one here. I have the last one here. Let's put them somehow in there. So you, this is what you do. You click here, you click that there, control click, eh? and then control click, control click, control click, control click. You wait a little, it takes a while, but it's worth to do it. And then you distribute horizontally. And Power BI does the job. You don't have to do it and start like, ooh, how? And then align to the top. How cool is this, right? Okay, so now we have this in place. Now we need to change these wins. We have to put uh, lost of total. Change the name. We have to put draws. And then it should be draw of total. And then we have to put goals for of total. Let's open here, goals for of total. Goals against of total. Change in there. And then we have the goal stiff of total. Okay. And now we have them. Cool. Now we have one. I've created one for all the points. So I have here points of total, which I'm going to do is copy that, put it in there and then put points of total. And this is going to stay like that. So there are 21 points. And uh, obviously, if I don't filter anything, it's 21 out of 21. Uh, but then we have seven wins, seven loss, 21 go goals for, 21 goals against. If I click on here, this looks a bit suspect. Goals to gain five, but it is okay, fine. It is five and five and five and five. Okay, cool. Okay. So, Great, right? So now the next thing we are going to do, there is on the original report, I have this round thing, which is a donut. And I used it like this. If I don't choose anything, there will be everything rounded, obviously. But if, if I pick a country now, a group, sorry, it will tell me that their group A has six points of 21 in total. And you see that the donut chart changes accordingly. I think I thought it was quite cool. Um, visualization. So we're going to create that. Put it up there. And to create that, I have created 
I have here a um, measure that says sums of points, so that sums all the points. And then I have another measure that says rest of points. <laughs> so it is all the points minus the points of whatever gets filtered in the canvas. Confusing, right? Okay, so let me show you. Here, points. And then we have points all teams. 21, obviously, but then rest of points. So if I click on here, you see what it calculates? It does all points minus the points that have been awarded to team A. So it's 15. So I have 6 and 15. Look what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to put points and rest of points, and I'm going to create a donut chart. And I'm going to make this bigger. And I remember that when I created this visualization, it was when the Power BI team released the possibility to make the ch donut chart thinner. Let's see if I remember what it is because I never use this thing. In this case, I thought it looked cool though. Uh, inner radius. There. So I have, I have to make this a little bit bigger. You put it in there and now I'm going to put um, the coloring right. So we put the data colors, the rest of points have to be grayish and then the points in red. And then for, I do want to have data labels, but I don't want to have that, right? I want to have a, uh, Category, I think I want to have value and percent of total. So six points, which is 28%. So team A or group A has six, 28% of the points. Okay. And then I have done this for each one of those. I don't want it, it's going to take me forever to do this, but you will use wins and wins rest, lost and lost rest, and so on. So I have one this visualization here so you can see the percentage of each. So this is a place where the user will go and see the results for the different groups of the different teams. So how they are doing against their team or how they are doing against the entire, all the teams, you know, all the groups. Great, let's move on. We are going to now look at the players tab. So for the players tab, it was much more interesting with the male FIFA. I have to unfortunately admit myself because there are more famous players to begin with. So you want to know who qualify and who is playing, if there's any like super Ronaldo that is playing or not. Um, it is the same for the ladies, but it's just a little bit le less unknown. And there was tons of information for the males. It was like which clubs they play, play for, from how old they were, the marital status, you have everything. Here you have much, much less. But uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show again the flag. I just like it. I think it just makes things very, very, very visual. We're going to see the uh, doo -doo 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 teams. And the reason why I put flag and teams is because I'm sure there are fans out there that do not know how a country flag looks like. So by putting the name, you're helping them. Okay, this is not a geography uh, lesson. So you don't have to know how the flags look, you still can get the name either way. That's the idea behind it, at least. So we're going to see the group. And now we go to the players and we're going to see the uh, player name, the position. And then I have a line in the real report you can see here, that is just color. 
and I'm going to show you how to check it. But you can see here that I have this one. I am actually going to copy because I'm not going to reproduce it. This is still not working either way. So uh, so this is basically um, done with the uh, Synoptic panel. And this is where you can, you know, add like hotspots on your image so you can click on them. So you're supposed to be able to click here and it should filter in there. It just doesn't do it. I And I didn't have the time to fix it. I haven't had the time to fix it yet. But the idea is that you click here in case that somebody does not know where the fence plays or where the midfield is or where the forward is, you can see there visually. And this could be a filter. It's not working as a filter, but it could. So I wanted to highlight here the same thing. I wanted, with your eyes, you could see the position of the player. And this is especially useful in the women's FIFA in case you don't know the ladies so well. So this is what I did. I have here a uh, measure that that's like that. It is a switch and it says switch So the switch is basically telling us, let me, let me format this so you can see a little bit better what is going on in here. So this is, this is what this measure is saying. It says, okay, if the player position, this one, there is a column called position. Let me put it in here so you can see it there. You see? So it says, if the player position, go back, if the player position is GK, goalkeeper, then one. If it is the F2, MF3, and 4, 4. The reason why I do this is because when this was created, there was no conditional formatting for, you know, with rule values. You, you, you have to add a number. I think that this is possible to do without this trick. You should be able to do it directly, but it was not possible when I did this and I haven't had the time to change it. So let's do it the same way. <laughs> okay. So let's go. We're going to conditional format this thing. Okay. So we're going to do background color first and let me grab the colors because I want to have them uh, the same colors um, here and in the other one. So we're going to do rules based on um, on field, on field, postcode, postcode, which is on players there. And then it says if is greater or equal, if it's greater than zero and less or equal than one, then you're going to grab this color. Next one is greater than one, two, change the colors in a second, is greater than two, less or equal than three, is greater than three, less or equal than four. And then you put the different colors in there. So the next color is that one. And then we have the next color that is this one. And then the next color that is red. Okay. And now we need to color the, do we need to color? Let me check before you can say, no, there is no option. There are some places where you can say, uh, don't show numbers. You cannot do this. So you have to color also the numbers. So you do the exact same thing here. 
with color based on then is greater than zero one add Yay! So now you have it. So now we have the position of the players. Okay. So we have the name, we have the group, we have the team, we have the positions. Um, let's continue building basically. Okay, so now what I would like to do, because this filter did not really work, and also I think, let me show you, what we want to do is be able to say, okay, who are the forwards? And either you click here, or because this thing doesn't work, we're going to have position and number of players as a tree map. Okay, so here we have, we can actually remove that. and have that one in there. We want to know how many players there are in there. So put the label and we want to color that the same color as in here, right? So the goalkeeper should be uh, yellowish. The forward should be red. The midfielder should be orangey. And then the defender should be less orangey, basically like that. So, so now I can see, okay, give me all the forwards. And this is all the forwards for all the countries. Give me all the goalkeepers. And so on and so forth. So you will be able to discover the players in which position they are playing. We also want to know where they are in the world, right? So we put country, we put number of players, and we let those bubbles pop. There's 23 on everything. That's why the size of the bubbles is always the same. If you don't know the name of the countries, you you have somewhere a possibility to to have the names in there. Don't remember what it was for this map. Uh, map control, some buttons. Uh, map styles, maybe no. Heat map, title, title text. I don't remember what it was, but I, otherwise you can have the name in case you don't know exactly where a country is located. Uh, and the last thing we're going to have is two more things. We're going to have the um, number of players. So we want to know exactly how many girls are actually on the FIFA World Cup. And we want a title here because we the report is a little bit interactive it means that it will be filtered you will filter everywhere and then it is actually going to go to be able to see where you're filtering on obviously the flags here will give you a hint of which country is being filtered at least the first one but it doesn't hurt to have a dynamic title i love dynamic titles for headers so you put it as header and then remove the category and when i click on a country It should change. <laughs> uh, let me show how that title is working. It says standing teams, standing team. So it's working from not country, but the team. So it is if I click on here that it will change. Yay. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. You can actually add the country to that in case you want it to work also from here, okay? But more often than not, this is what you're going to do. And I think that's why I thought it that way. We're going to get, have a drill through 
So when you are here, you can right click and then read through to players and then it will filter here and here. But you can add country if you want to. Okay, so now we have players. Let's move into matches. Matches. So, how are we going to do with matches? With matches, the first thing I want to do, I want to do the same thing as standings. I want to have a filter on group that is big, you know, mobile friendly. So in case they want to see which other matches are going on, they can easily change around. Okay. So yes, sync, please. And uh, we want to have team flag flag URL. Oh no, 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 we're not going to use flag URL. We're going to use the it is on here, team flag A, and then we're going to have matches, and then we're going to have team flag B. I think that is quite cool. This is what they have on the FIFA website, and I think it looks gorgeous because you can see, you don't need to read who is playing against with just by watching, looking at the flags. I thought it was super cool. So we're going to get the local date, the local time, and you know what I haven't done? Oh my God. We've got to go here to file options and settings and options. And disable. I thought I'd done it. Oh, it's an old version. That's why. Uh, okay. Mm. But disable out of date time. Please do it. So local date, local time, I just haven't updated to the version where you can actually do that. And that's why. So group, we're going to put the stadium and we're going to put the city. So, so now you have information about who is playing where. Put it in there. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger. That's way too small text. That's too big. I think that's fine. Okay. Now we are going to put a map with um, the teams. Oh, you can find the teams. That's cool. Then we should change the teams. Okay. So here, teams. In the map, and it's not these teams, it is these teams, so it can filter, I'm guessing. not showing any teams whatsoever for the weirdest reason. Um, number of, I can put teams twice, but exactly count. Let me check one thing. It does it sometimes. I don't know if you have to explicitly tell that there is countries. Uh, let's see how I did on the correct report. Teams standings. Although he was actually doing it correctly. So now, so now we have the teams. If I pick a team, 
in here, yeah, it shows us the right ones. And the next thing we want to build is a calendar. We want to build a calendar that um, where you can pick a date and it will show you who is playing when. And for that, I actually downloaded a custom visual, something that I almost never use. And it was this one, Custom Calendar by Akvalon. Thank you, dear. Not there. Point somewhere outside. Grab that one. And in there, we're going to have a local date and match ID. So that will do the count of matches. So I don't know why this is so big now. Uh, number of months. There you have it. So, so now I can pick who is playing the 7th of June. There are two matches and it is match ID 2. No, but I want to have the count, my dear. Count. So there's one match, here there's one match, here there are uh, two matches, here they are Two matches, so you can see who is playing each day. Cool, huh? Okay, so with that, the only thing that we have left is the uh, knockout. This is getting long, but let's do it. Let's do the last thing, the knockout phase. Okay, so we create a new tab. Knockout. And uh, for the knockout phase, I actually try to find, uh, you know, hierarchical um, visualizations. And there are a few in the Power BI, uh, what is it called, the store, the visual store. But uh, I didn't like any of them. I thought they were a little bit messy for, or just maybe I didn't have the time to just format it the way I wanted. So I said, I'll do it my own. Okay. So I decided to create a very, 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 very simple, but useful um, visualization of the knockout. So this is what I did. I am going to show you uh, the knockout matches we have here, the data. What I did was I had the matches winner and then the time and then the city. And then I have them as a card. You see here? I then did it like that. So, you know, I got all the information like that and all of these matches they have a match id so for example the first match i want is the one that has match id 37 so there we have it and then i did not want to have any uh, category label i did want to have a super thick bar and I want to have the bar color like that. And then I had um, and a little bit thicker. I'm not sure exactly which one I had, not that one. Maybe it was that, let me show, let me see uh, what font I had. That one. 
You see? So now I need to have like cards like that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minus this one. So it's seven. So I'm going to put four, five, six, seven. And now I'm going to put them somewhere in here, like we did the last time. They don't have to be in the right, correct position. It's somewhere in there. And then I'm going to grab them all, the first one and the last one. And then control click each and every one of those visuals. It'll take a while, so be patient. When you think that it's not doing anything, it is grabbing it. So now that we have all of them select, tick distribute horizontally and align to the top. And now you have them perfectly, perfectly aligned. Okay, so you don't have to do that manually or it's a pain otherwise. Huge pain. So now I'm going to get this one, copy it there, put it somewhere in here because this one is that one, this one should be somewhere in there. This one should be somewhere in there. Which one is those two? Oh, there's me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one match missing. I have to put one there. So you have someone in there, some like that. One between these two and one between these two and so on and so forth, right? And then you have to change each match with its uh, correct match number. So this is 37, the other one is 38. The next one is 39. I'm not going to bother you doing every one, but you know now how it works. And now these two play together against this red one, so then I had a shape, triangle. We're going to fill this thing red, no line. There's got to be a line. Okay, so we put a red line, don't care. And then I want to rotate this. hundred and eighty degrees. So I wanted to have it upside down and then you put it in there. Make it a little bit smaller. Something like that. So it means these three are a group and then you have to change the color of these ones. And let's say that we want to put, I don't know, blue. And we want to change that to the same blue. You see how it's done? And then you have to continue all the way until you have the entire thing. Otherwise, I don't want to show you everything, I'll bore you to death, but you'll see the mechanics of it anyhow, so you see exactly how I build it. There is one last thing to build before we close shop for today. Tooltip team. So here's the thing. I created a tooltip so when you were on a team you could hover over. Let me show you. And then you could see how that team was doing. So you can see here if I hover over France, maybe the tool till is not because I didn't activate it everywhere. Teams, standing steam. So where there is a standing steam, that thing should pop up. Come on, 
This is a standing teams. For sure it is a standing teams. Where is the tooltip? So, when there is a standing steam, it should show the tooltip, and now it is showing it, you can see here. You have to activate it. It wasn't activated, basically. Uh, so this is the last thing we need to grab, basically, so to create. So let's do it very, very quickly. And then on the next video, we will do all the navigation, the drill through, the activate tooltips, you know, the, all that stuff, and the branding. Otherwise, this video is going to get, like, humongous big. So the first thing I'm going to do to create that small tooltip is um, you go to here. This is absolutely not what you need to do to activate tooltip. I, it shouldn't be this hard. So in page information, you have to put on the tooltip. You have to go to page size and put tooltip in there. And once you have that, you have to go in here and say, what is going to activate the tooltip? We said that it was Teams, put it in there. Then you go here, you go to actual size, and then you see how the actual size of the tooltip will be. Uh, the next thing we're going to build, we're going to put in the flag URL. And for this, I use this image. It is a custom visual, image custom visual. And the reason for me using this is there was no other option to do it before. It is actually now, so you don't have to download it. But as I have it here, let's use it. Um, put it like that. We've got to make this a little bit smaller. Something like that. Now we want to have a title for the um, team, which is this one. So selected value says, okay, whatever is being filtered, show me. Put it in there. It will say obviously blank in there, but it won't say blank once it's been filtered. Remove the category label. I am guessing that this is a bit smaller than that. Probably even smaller. Let me check how small I did it. 18. Yeah. And now we have to have the wins, the losts, the uh, draws, and all that stuff. So put it in there. This is wins. It has a red label for wins, and then it is just a card. And then I have one for wins, one for lost, one for draws. I'm copying it from the original because this is like super easy to do. And then obviously you can do the same trick as I did before. You can grab them and you can distribute horizontally, vertically, align to the top. You know the drill now. So super easy. I had also the pie charts or the donut charts. The thing with the donut charts is that they are always to be rounded. They are always to going to be, there's not going to be a partition on those. So perhaps there's no point on having them. But I thought they would look cute. They look like, you know, the Olympic rings. So I thought, uh, why not? Let's put them in. But maybe it's better not to have them in, actually, to put like a different squares here so you can see, or, or like a, um, I don't know, a bar, something else. Okay, so now we have built all the tabs and we still have left the navigation and we still have left tooltips drill through and branded DM. Okay, enough for today. I We have to stop now. I will continue again um, on, 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 on the next video doing what is left, okay? So I hope you're enjoying this. I'll see you again on the next video. Take care. Bye.